Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Thank you very much for finding time and joining us today. I am really glad to see so many uh, active teachers who are ready to get some knowledge, who are ready for their new school year, I hope. And I guess that in um, several minutes, we are going to start. Uh, as usually, I see so many different places, uh, like all Ukraine is here, the Donetsk re region, uh, Kamenka, Cherkasy, Kharkiv. Hello, everyone. Um, that's wonderful uh, to see everyone here. And um, I hope that the next 60 minutes will be really productive and interesting for you. So I can't help uh, but share uh, some um, new information with you. Ushgorod, Sumy, Krivy Rih, Dnipro, Kiev. Great. Today we are having chat, so uh, you can write some comments, your thoughts, maybe questions. Uh, that would be great if you're active. Uh, so you will get the most of, of the next 60 minutes. Okay, Odessa, uh, Ternopil, Kiev. Wonderful. Are you ready for the new school year? Are you looking forward to meeting your students? Are you meeting your students actually? Are there any news from your places? Will there gonna will there be any um, lessons next week? Yes. I hope I guess that our students are also looking forward for it. Mm -hmm. Yes, wonderful. So many motivated teachers are here with us today. So I guess we can start. Um, today we are going to talk about uh, global citizens, global citizenship. But first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Diana Galavan. I am an LT consultant uh, for in linguist company. Uh, and uh, today, uh, I'm speaking on behalf of National Geographic Learning. Uh, that's a wonderful publishing house that uh, one of uh, its aim actually is to bring uh, the real world into the classroom. And uh, educating global citizens uh, is also one of the main tasks of the textbooks from this publishing house. So, our plan for today. First of all, uh, we'll discuss what the global citizenship is. After that, I'm going to share some top ideas of what we can do in order to educate global citizens. And I b uh, believe and I ask <laughs> everyone to join the discussion to share your ideas. Probably if you've done uh, something about this, um, part of our education that would be great to listen to some fresh ideas and uh, then uh, at the end I'm going to share some useful resources what you can do where you can find the material that is um, great for educating uh, children and teenagers well uh, so many teachers are also writing here uh, to us today, Cherkasy region, Vasele, Torec, Lviv, uh, Stanica Luganska, Chernigiv, great, her son, I'd say that Odessa, right, <laughs> so I'd say that all Ukraine is here, wonderful. Also, very important note about your certificates. You are going to get the certificates within three working weeks. So today's Friday, um, so it's Monday and Tuesday. 
and we are going to send you the, uh, the certificates due to some technical issues. It's an impossible to, to do automatically. So please give us some time to, to get ready with, uh, with the certificates and you will get them very soon. So first of all, you will get an email with useful links with the recording that is going to happen after the webinar. And after that, within three days, they're going to be your certificate. So please be patient. Uh, everyone will get them, but you need some time for that. Okay, I hope I will remind you this information at the end as well. Uh, Again, some more words about National Geographic Learning. That is a publishing house uh, that prepares books that um, help us show the students real world. You don't need to find some materials on the internet. Everything is in the book. Either it's for primary learners or for teenagers or maybe for adults. All the material uh, is about real life, about real people, about um, current situations. So students read fascinating stories of um, their you know, peers and also they meet different culture. They get to know how children in different parts of the world live, what they do. And for us teachers, that is a great help because this book helps us keep our students motivated. I've checked it several times with my students and I do uh, know that the books uh, bring um, really some fresh ideas. They inspire uh, communication. They help us develop 21st century uh, skills. And uh, um, what is more, the books uh, are um, teach our students wonderful English, great um, um, information, lots of new vocabulary, really profound uh, developing of the different skills and grammar knowledge as well. I'll tell a bit more about the books at the end, and I think we need uh, we we. We will start. If you haven't done it yet, visit our site. National Geographic Learning in Ukraine has its own site where we collected all the useful resources like webinars, seminars, demo lessons, articles. By the way, yesterday there was a new a game created for teachers for revision irregular verbs. You can download it by visiting our site, uh, National Geographic Learning uh, linguist.ngl.com UA. And also, if you are interested in the textbooks, if you haven't chosen the books for your students yet, you uh, you get a chance to, to take one of the most uh, modern books uh, by viewing the catalog. So please welcome to our site. Let's do some warm up. Let's take... Um, Let's get a little survey. Uh, there, there are going to be several questions for you. Uh, okay. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay. So the first uh, the first question is: How important is integrating culture? is integrating cultural awareness with the lessons to your mind. It's very important, it's important, or probably it's not the task of an English language teachers. Very important. So uh, I can see that there are something like 50-50 um, votes. Mm -hmm. Even, yeah. We all understand it's important, but to what extent? Yeah, we, we differ. Extremely important. Great. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your ideas, actually. Why do you think cultural awareness is extremely important? 
Of course, the first option. <laughs> well done. It's our future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This process of globalization of the world um, is happening right now, yes? And we need to educate children who are ready to understand different cultures, to know that they are not the only people in the world, that they are different and we need to respect all the all others. Well done. So let's move to next questions. You already voted. How important is uh, integrating cultural awareness in the lesson? Okay, so good. Useful for understanding people, that's right. We can even bet, understand better ourselves. It, it will help. It's not enough to know the language. You will feel more fluent if you know about the culture of the language you learn. But, um, great. So let's move on, I guess. Thank you very much for sharing your ideas. So th these are the results. You can see that uh, everyone here thinks it's important, but to what extent? Uh, we have a bit different uh, thoughts. Some of you thought it's very important, some of you is just important. Yeah, not maybe the first place, but anyway. Well done. Okay, uh, good. Uh, there are some... Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about your experience. How much do you integrate culture uh, to your language lessons? A lot from time to time, not much. Or you're not sure if, you're, if it is integration, actually. I believe that if we are the teachers who work at school, we have very tough schedule, very limit, we are very limited in time, and there is not so much time for us to, to dedicate a lesson to understanding different cultures and so on and so, so forth. However, there are some ideas what we can do in order to spend more time and uh, study English at the same time as well. Yeah, it depends. Mm -hmm. Uh, learning a foreign language is already the integration of foreign culture. That's an uh, excellent uh, thought to my mind. Uh, if we teach the la language and we use the materials that tell us about the world, right, not just probably grammar and vocabulary, we uh, help our students understand foreign culture much better. That's right. Good, great job. I don't think that we... Uh, thank you for sharing. So, uh, I'd say that the one of the most popular answers, or oh, the most popular answer is from time to time. So anyway, uh, we uh, try to integrate culture to our language lessons. And uh, in this case, we will, so we try to find some time in order to do that. Great, thank you very much. And my last question, my last question, Actually, do you know what the global citizens are?
so if there um, would be a question from your students, maybe to you, would you explain them uh, the meaning of this phrase, uh, uh, global citizens? Maybe you have your own ideas about that and you haven't checked them. That would be interesting to read, actually, if you have already voted. So spend some time and write your definition, because we are going to look at the definitions in a few seconds, in a few minutes. But it's very interesting to know what we teachers think about it. What global uh, citizenship for us? So, a global citizen is, is someone who cares about our planet, thank you very much, who can live anywhere and work and feel comfortable, cosmopolitan, person who feels himself at home no matter what part of the world it is, mm -hmm. to be a human who is respectable to any culture, any language. Hi from, hi to Lviv, <laughs> Vladislava, can adopt to different conditions. A person who is open to new challenges, um, accepts every nation and culture. Great. A set of skills you should have to survive anywhere. Global citizenship is the possibility to integrate and feel any culture. Mm -hmm. Who understands global issues. Great. These are, thank you very much for sharing your ideas. I guess that you will find them in my next slides. And um, here you can see the results of our voting. So we have more or less understanding of what the global citizenship is, who is responsible for safety of our planet, understanding uh, the world, society and nature, respect to culture we are one family thank you thank you uh, for sharing i guess that all of you have right are right and uh, this is really something that um, the, the word the combination uh, that became popular i'd say several years ago and now Everyone is talking about importance of it, but actually, what global citizenship is? If to look at the definition that gives us um, some uh, sites, some resources, for example, Wikipedia, we would read a very long definition uh, that global citizenship is the idea that one's identity transcend geography or political borders and that responsibilities are right are derived from membership in a broader class humanity. This, this doesn't mean that such a person denounces or waives their nationality or other more local identities, but that such identities are given second place to their membership in a global community. So, kind of a very, very long definition, but what is important here is that a global citizen is someone who, um, and, who meets another people and see like, humans in them, see people in them, no matter what race, uh, beliefs, religion they are. The first, uh, the, the first uh, place is that we are all humans, uh, we have our feelings, we have our beliefs, we have our experience, probably. And um, we need uh, to understand, to care uh, of each other. But uh, if to look closely at this definition, you will see that it doesn't matter that this per uh, the person denounces their nationality. So being Ukrainian, for example, is still important. But uh, uh, like it's not as important as that another person is also a human, right? So when we uh, educate global citizens, we need to think about the following uh, issues. 
first of all, global uh, citizens and someone who uh, aware of cultures. And here I'd say that it's important that we are aware of different culture as well as of our own, right? Underst uh, understanding diversity, the same. We need uh, to uh, explain to our students and also we need um, to understand it to ourselves that there are different people, different minds, different uh, tastes, maybe different points of view. And uh, we shouldn't laugh at them. We sh laugh at them. We shouldn't um, uh, think that someone's opinion is less important, right? We should understand uh, that there are different opinions, for example, different religions, different um, habits, and uh, accept them. Also, global citizen is someone who understands all in place in the world. This is a person, if we are talking about uh, children, these are, they, they understand where they are from, what are their roots are. And uh, they also understand that they are someone in the world. They are not just um, like a single person. They are someone who can make difference. Uh, who is important as well as other people. Uh, so, in, so when we educate global citizens, we also need to, uh, to think about um, uh, children's dignity and that they need to, um, to be sure that they can make difference. And probably we even can start doing that. Uh, by doing some projects, by taking part in some interesting initiatives, by doing uh, some good things for others. Uh, in this case, uh, the children will understand that they, they are important in our world, as well as some famous people, for example. And also, global citizens are people who, who are ready to act to make our world a better place. Right? We all understand that um, we don't live in the perfect world, right? It's all right. It's okay. Uh, anyway, um, anyway, we need uh, um, to be active. Global citizens and someone who active. So if you type global citizenship uh, in the Google, you will see that uh, the first is the site, global citizenship. And uh, this site... Uh, this site's aim is to do, uh, is some charity. So these are active people. You see, so global citizenship. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean at all that we uh, is uh, someone. It doesn't only mean that uh, it's someone who understands another culture, right? But uh, these are people who understand culture as well as themselves know that they are important in the world and they can make, make difference. However, they understand that they are not the only people in the world. There are different people. They respect other people's choices, other people's beliefs, other people's um, customs. And for them, it's like being a human is the most important thing. Okay, so there was some theory. Now let's talk about our lessons. Anyway, in some days we are going to have these um, English language lessons again. And why English? Why we talk about global citizenship with English language teachers so much? First of all, uh, we uh, teach uh, the language of international communication, right? If you are uh, in some new place and you don't know um, the person's language, 80% that this person speaks English. Worse, better, uh, different levels, but anyway, there are uh, there is much biggest chances to speak English with people in different countries. Also, uh, knowing English, uh, speaking English, help us um, to get much more information. Uh, we have 
great uh, interest in materials in our native language. However, uh, there are much more uh, interesting materials, maybe in use, uh, some researches, um, innovations written in English, uh, and they haven't been translated into our language yet. So now in English, we can explain this to our students actually, that now in English, we, are, um, we have this great chance to be the first who knows, um, who, who finds out about the news, who finds out about some innovations. Also, there is a great chance to, to read about different problems from different points of view. Probably, uh, if we are talking about reading some news, about some, um, I would say, news, right? We can read them here from our Ukrainian media, but also, we can uh, find what English newspaper or American newspaper says about this. And in this case, we will understand how our culture, how our cult, uh, country uh, is talked about in another country, in, in, in the world. So what people from other world think and know about us. Also, uh, we can co compare cultures. Uh, teaching... Uh, you wrote uh, that teaching English or studying English is already cultural integration. So in this case, we can integrate English with uh, our own culture and um, students can compare uh, in the, and we will help them to understand different culture much better. Okay, uh, now uh, some top ideas what we can do in order to educate our children and to study English. We can use different images and videos. I suggest using uh, real life photos. Uh, luckily, we all um, have a chance to use the internet to find different pictures and to talk uh, with uh, our students about them. Here you can see an example of a school in India uh, where uh, children are in the classroom, they are having the lesson. However, uh, this classroom is a bit different from our own classrooms, right? This is what we can ask our students. So look and compare. Uh, what is different uh, here? Look at your classroom, look at their classroom. What is different? What is the same? It's also important to find some similarities to show them that we still are humans, uh, we still have something in common. As you can see, uh, right, they don't have desks, they don't have tables, they're sitting, but no matter, it doesn't stop them uh, from learning, right? So they're still, they uh, um, look very motivated. They still study, yes. They're sitting on the floor, their sitting arrangement is different. Yes, and we can ask our students, what about you? Would you like to sit in a circle? What do you think? Is it better uh, or you won't feel so comfortable? Right? Yeah, eye contact, that's right. They have better eye contact here. They can look at each other. They can discuss. As, as you can see, the text is uh, really um, easy. Uh, I would say that it's taken from the book from the first grade. So even with such small children as six years old, our first graders, we still can show them how different our world is. Right? What we can do, how, uh, how we can help our, let's say, first graders, second graders to... Um, to use this picture uh, to talk about different culture. Of course, with children, uh, the, the most uh, important and the most effective tool is playing a game. So we can play interview game with them. Let's imagine, so they have some uh, uh, interview worksheet. You can prepare it uh, for your students and you can ask them, please write some questions to the teacher, right? Imagine that you are an interviewer who would like to take an interview from the teacher who works in India. 
what will you uh, ask her? Uh, after that, uh, after that, you will. They can role play these dialogues when uh, they. So here are some examples, right? Where do you work? How many students are there? What is there in your classroom? If uh, if your um, students aren't uh, still able to prepare questions by themselves, maybe they are, they don't have this knowledge. It's just the first grade, right? You can prepare these questions. Uh, to them, but they will act as they are different teachers. You can even organize an international conference where teachers from different countries are and they will share about their schools. For example, uh, it could be a school from India, a school from the USA, a school from Brazil, a school from Italy. They can, uh, you can show them the pictures or they can invent. In this case, for them, it will be quite natural that there are different countries, different people. But anyway, you can uh, ask them, for example, the last question, do you like your job? I think that everyone will ask, will answer, yes, I like. So uh, they will feel that no matter where you teach, how, what uh, desks you have, how many students you have, anyway, all teachers love their job. I really like your ideas about uh, writing here that the teacher is a partner, uh, that uh, it's a friendly atmosphere. And I think that after some discussion, they will even have some better motivation. They will see that teachers are also <laughs> humans who can be talked to, who can be played with. And uh, you can even suggest them let's play today that we have our that our school is in india now and let's organize the lesson like this the students will be amused by a new atmosphere so and for you it will be much easier to give them the material for example right uh probably probably for the first grade uh, creating questions would be um a bit of different difficult task but anyway we can help them we can prompt them right you can be an interview they can be teachers they they will uh, be they will need on to answer uh, so anyway there are some chances uh, some options how you can adapt the exercise to your class level let's move on this is one of my favorite picture of lunch. Uh, the book says the lunch is from Japan and uh, food is one of the most favorite topic for all students in uh, all over the world, I would say. So that is a great um, source to talk about and to, um, to get our students interested. So what we can do? Before reading the text, before showing the picture, we can ask our students. So, children, what do you usually have for lunch? Yeah, they can make a list. They will practice their writing. Maybe if they are too young, they can draw pictures and then just name these types of products. After that, you show them the picture of lunch. Again, you can prepare pictures from different countries. And they can uh, then compare. You even can use the Venn diagram when, and teach them this great chance how to com contrast and compare things, right? So in the first circle, they will write their, um, what their lunch is like. For example, it could be soup, it could be bread, it could be meat, maybe porridge, salad, vegetables, right? And uh, then after they've read the text, after they've seen this, uh, the picture, they will uh, write down the products in the second circle, right? So you see? We develop writing skills here and uh, we are talking about different cultures. Uh, 
So this is what I was talking about at the beginning. So there are some ways how we can integrate, how we can teach about culture and don't for, not forget teaching the language. Then they work together maybe with the teacher who, who can give examples, who can prompt them. They need to find what is similar. So what products are similar? Maybe they all eat rice, yeah? Uh, but the tools are different, right? The children in Japan eat with chopsticks, but children in Ukraine eat rice with the forks, right? Maybe if even they don't know the words like forks and chopsticks, there would be a really great chance, like really communicative, um, event, <laughs> communicative, um, mean and uh, they will remember these words so uh, they they are interested they are motivated and they study new words and they know about different culture after that they come home and they will tell their parents about you know uh, children in japan also have lunch at school but they eat it with chopsticks right so the, you will help them to educate their parents for example like imaginary educate their parents to share what they are interested in. Great. So there were some of the tasks. Let's move on. More things. I was talking not uh, just about images, but also about um, uh, videos. We can use videos from all over the world and help our students and use the map where they will pin which places they visited in the video. For example, a very interesting, very uh, easy to watch video. I'm going to present it to you right now. Um, one second, I just need to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So here are the, uh, there are some uh, animals who are traveling and you need to understand what country they are visiting. They're in a helicopter. There's a great beach. There's a school. Alternatively, uh, we can uh, show them the real life videos. For example, um, about the amusement park, we can ask them to recall their last visit. And they can uh, write China. Great, yeah. Uh, actually, um, the cartoon is about Australia, right? The, the, um, it's like an international team of journalists, panda, uh, tiger, squirrel. They are traveling the world. They are visiting different uh, places. You can see, I will just show you again my screen so you um here it is oh, oops. Uh, 
So, uh, the international group of uh, journalists who are traveling uh, Africa, Australia, Brazil, Greece, right? So, for each, after each episode, uh, you can go uh, to the map and the, your students will pin uh, the countries they visited uh, in the cartoon uh, or while watching the video. Uh, for them, it's important. Uh, I've noticed that our educational um, system promote this uh, geographical knowledge a bit later. And uh, some students in different countries, they know the maps much better than our primary students. Uh, this case happened with, with the students who I've taught, so uh, I decided to help them. And uh, in this way that I've just shared with you, we... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, in this case, uh, we uh, study about the world and for them, uh, th they have some images in their heads. So for them, the world, for example, uh, Australia was, wasn't was just the world. For them, it was connected with the cartoon that they've seen. And there would be an episode about the kangaroo, so they saw it and so on and so forth. The same is about amusement park. It could be uh, uh, this famous amusement park, uh, park in Barcelona. Uh, and they will watch the video, which is interesting for them. They will find this uh, Spain and Barcelona on the map and they will get this um, connection that it's not just some Barcelona, right? This is the place where you can have fun at the amusement park. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the same is about the part of the world, right? Uh, the uh, south, uh, Southern Hemisphere, Northern Hemisphere, West, East, uh, right, the, um, the continents, right? So we can help them understand our world and get to know our world much better. Also, what we can do, uh, we always, uh, these are ideas for a bit older students, not first, second graders, but maybe starting from the third grade, it would be great. It would be an, an interesting idea to motivate our students to do some researches. What I mean, when you read a text in your textbook, uh, Ask your students as a homework to find some interesting places in the text and uh, search, search the net and find out images about them. And for lower levels, finding images would be enough. For high levels, it could be finding some more information about it. They even can find information in uh, their native language and then give you a very short summary in English. For example, Sydney, Australia, is in, in the Thousand Hemisphere, uh, the capital uh, is Canberra. And it would be enough for, for our students, but uh, it's not something the teacher tells them, it's something that they uh, found. So next time you're reading the text about um, uh, interesting places in the world, ask your students as a homework to read this text again, to underline to or highlight all the interesting places or uh, uh, landmarks and find information. Yeah, prepare information. That's right. Uh, in this case, reading the text wouldn't be just the task, uh, reading task as, as they are used to. For them, it would be something interesting. Okay, I need to use the internet, I need to use the computer, and uh, I need to find uh, images. I, or maybe even prepare the presentation about them. So uh, they d we develop reading, we develop speaking, we help, uh, we give them these digital skills as finding information on the internet. And at the same time, we educate them about the world. And maybe uh, another optional uh, alternative task would be uh, find, um, for example, um, pictures, something similar about your country or even about your town. Here we have wild mouse roller coaster. I guess it's something interesting. Have you ever seen it? 
I remember one time when I had the seminar at, at the school, uh, the teachers became uh, surfing the internet while uh, reading these examples. Uh, so it shows how motivated students become and teachers become when working with really interesting and real world texts. So we can ask our students, okay, you need to find the wild mouse roller coaster to prepare a picture and also find or maybe even go to your, your amusement park and take a picture of roller coaster in your city, in your town, in your place, or just find it on the internet. And let's compare. We can practice grammar with it. We can practice um, speaking with it. But uh, based on this material, the students found by themselves. Again, we develop this cultural wellness. We uh, help them to realize where they live, that their country, their town also have some interesting uh, places to go. They can feel proud of it. And we can also practice some grammar, for example. This is bigger, this is smaller. We can practice uh, making presentation. So the, do, by doing this, we, we include lots of skills and our students feel motivated. They don't feel it's just a lesson. They feel it's, oh, wow, it's like a field trip in the lesson. All right, let's move on. Um, Also, uh, global citizens are someone who would like to make changes, who would like to, um, to be active citizens. And it's better to stand when they, are, when they are small. There are different projects, international programs uh, that are free and you can take part in them. Uh, the ones that I know are it winning and Skype in the classroom. You can just search on the Facebook, their page, their groups, and um, uh, connect with teachers from all over the world, especially Skype in the classroom. There, there are very active teachers, and you will uh, prepare some um, international projects. Your, uh, your students will take part in something. You can talk about the environment, you can talk about um, helping to fight um, some educational maybe issues or something like that. So uh, this is a task for you uh, after the webinar to, to uh, search what it is, uh, this uh, organization that helps teachers find each other from all over the world and create different projects. And um, also uh, to create a project uh, for yourself, mm -hmm. for your class. Uh, as uh, National Geographic Learning also uh, would help teachers uh, to feel a part of community. For example, in the last year, uh, National Geographic Learning Ukraine had a competition for Ukrainian teachers. Uh, they, not even for teachers, but for students. The students had to prepare a, a video um, or a presentation of creating uh, the Christmas dish. It could be a dish from Ukraine, from English, from Italy, from any country. And uh, we uh, collected all these videos. There were more than 40 videos that I've checked with great um, dishes. Alternate, altern alternatively, there were postcards, but also like from all over the world, and our students, mm, and then they got prizes. We got, uh, all students got the certificates and we got the uh, third, uh, three best places, which um, won the textbooks. And th that was a great experience when um, children got ready, they, they walked, uh, with the teachers, some of them worked individually or in little groups, and they um, uh, find found out about different dishes and shared with us. I guess that this year we are also going to announce a type, uh, this type of competition, uh, and um, based on cultural awareness of working together. Uh, so take 
Mm, follow us on Facebook. I guess that we'll announce uh, this competition in a few months, and you and your students will get the chance to to take part in some interesting project and also to win prizes. So, welcome everyone. Um, also, uh, now let's talk about where to find materials. I would recommend to uh, search this National Geographic site. Uh, they have interesting pictures. They have this a picture of a day, for example. You can uh, have this uh, um, custom uh, to every Monday, for example, look at the picture of the day or picture of the week and discuss it with your students. Also, there are interesting articles for you. It's uh, of course, it adds some more work uh, to your day, like adapting the article, finding the article, or maybe you will find so many interesting articles that you will spend the whole evening reading them. But this is the real life with a great and high quality content. So I'd recommend to, uh, to show a student that there, there are so many interesting things and uh, they can observe the things while watching really high quality photos and videos. Also, uh, on our page, Facebook, uh, National Geographic Learning Ukraine, uh, there are four words, National Geographic Learning Ukraine, and you will get the link uh, in the follow-up email. Uh, there are different um, interesting uh, photos, interesting ideas, um, how to, uh, what you can do with your students. Uh, we have these true or false uh, posts uh, several times a month, uh, which uh, tells about interesting world um, landmarks or people or places. Uh, also, there are some other ideas, like last month there, there was an article about you, five ideas how to use the photos in the classroom. So you can get inspired by that. We work to help students and teachers be inspired and don't lose the motivation and find out about the world and to feel that English is not just a subject, it's a tool that helps us find new people, find new information. For teachers, uh, it's a great uh, blog from National Geographic Learning in Focus. There is a link, you will get the link in the follow-up email. There are um, ideas from uh, National Geographic Learning ELT consultants, their ideas, what they do, their recommendations, some examples, you can download something, you can watch, you can use it and uh, get inspired. So, lots of methodological support can be found there. Another way where you can find the materials, this is uh, this uh, textbook, Wonderful World. All the examples were taken from this book. So this uh, the book is uh, recommended uh, by Ministry of Education. It has the permission to be used in the primary school and fifth and sixth grades. Uh, and these books that shows that it's uh, very easy to co uh, integrate cultures uh, into your English lesson. So all the materials uh, will be uh, sent. Uh, well, um, the material is presented while using this uh, great content. If you haven't met this book yet, uh, find, uh, the, find it. Uh, you will get the samples of the book in the follow-up email. And uh, maybe there is something interesting for you. Also, we've created different free additional materials from, for teachers from Ukraine, uh, it's done from Linguist, the uh, official representative of National Geographic Learning Ukraine. And uh, when you buy the book, when you buy the course, you will get the link to these free resources as well. So you can see that the book really brings the culture, the, it shows different cultures 
and helps our students to realize that there are different people in the world. They will read interesting uh, stories about them. Teacher's book, lesson planner, is something that helps uh, the teacher. So it, it has great methodological support. There are stories about the photos. You can use them to educate your students. There are some methodological tips for you what can be done, not only at this lesson, but uh, the following lesson. Uh, also, it's like step-by-step -step lesson plan that will uh, bring you from the beginning uh, to the end of the lesson and all um, the lessons are interconnected. So the first step is always a revision of the previous lesson, which I found find great. Not all the books uh, take, pay attention to that. Students not just find out about different cultures, they study to speak, to write, to listen, to read. Lots of um, material, rel um, <clears throat> it's, it's uh, aim um, to, for specialized schools, for those who um, have like a, a bit more hours uh, for English uh, studying. Also, the materials that can be found on the platform. I demonstrated it like 20 minutes ago, how it's easy to find the video to turn it on. Uh, you can download not just videos, but additional resources, such as graphic organizers, which were presented here, like this Venn diagram, this uh, interview um, out, uh, outline. So it's everything is on the platform. You just uh, need to... Uh, go and uh, print it. Another thing for presentation, for bringing real language and helping our students be aware of different culture is a um, mobile application, uh, Learn English with TED Talks. This is an application for your mobile phones or for students' mobile phones. Uh, or you can find it on the Google um, store. Uh, Play Market or uh, app, uh, I store, um, st app store or App Store, the students will um, get t uh, four levels of TED Talks uh, with uh, 10 TED Talks in each level, not just TED Talks, but also a different interesting tasks. Uh, to study the language before watching, to answer the questions while watching, to do vocabulary, grammar, reading, speaking exercises after watching. So this is a great additional task for your teenager students or maybe for adults. It can be used individually or it can be used uh, as a class for a class for discussions and the topics are up to date they can help us to to find out about interesting issues about different cultures you can download this uh, application and uh, get the trial uh, access with the four videos just to try it after that if you think it's um, appropriate to your classroom you can uh, call to your uh, manager in linguist company and uh, take the code uh, for others so there are 40 TED talks with exercises like um, it's uh, the, the whole lesson can be uh, built based on these TED Talks, everything is done for you and uh, your students are lucky to use their mobile phones again. <clears throat> so I recommend this um, application. Uh, now, some question time. Uh, I see that we have uh, 10 minutes. So I guess that we can discuss the questions that you have about teaching global citizens, about uh, any other issues. Thank you very much for your feedback. From time to time, I pay attention to what you wrote to me. Uh, I like that it's great that you like the ideas. Uh, and I hope that you will take something with you after the webinar, not just um, the good mood, but also some practical ideas. However, if you have any questions, please, you're welcome. 
we can discuss. Or you can share with me your ideas, what you do in order to bring, to talk about cultures, to help your students become global citizens. Anyway, while uh, I'm... While you are thinking about the questions, what the age uh, of students in the competition? I was talking about the previous competitions. It was for primary students and for secondary students. And uh, um, for primary and secondary students, yeah. Uh, and I guess that this year also will be the same. Uh, of course, there would be um, explanations, rules, uh, so you can do it. And of course, we always look. Uh, it doesn't mean that only secondary students can win because we uh, try to evaluate the effort um, to understand that the students, what they're capable of depending on their age. Uh -huh. The size of the video, the size, if you are, if, if you are talking about timing, uh, these cartoons, the videos that I have shown to you were about like from one one minute to three minutes, something like that, not very long. Uh, if you're talking about TED Talks, uh, there could be videos up to seven minutes uh, on average, let's say. If we are talking about the size like megabytes, um, you can write to me, I will show you. <laughs> I will uh, then check this information. Also, National Geographic Learning in Ukraine tries to support teachers. We prepare lots of uh, useful methodological materials. We um, prepare some methodological articles to you. And another thing is um, th there's going to be something new in September. We are going to have a Facebook Live event uh, called Teacher's Questions. Uh, you will... Um, you can just visit our Facebook page, find this post, uh, follow the link and leave your questions there. So when we have our Facebook live event, we will discuss the questions with you. Um, this is a new initiative and uh, I hope it will uh, become successful and popular within teachers because our main is just to support you, to inspire you, to um, uh, help you uh, forget about the routine and to think about something that is important for us. Thank you very much for your uh, support, uh, for being with me here today. Do you have any platform for grading students like Google Classroom or eRecord for students to send their task completed? Thank you. Uh, yeah, lots of books uh, from National Geographic Learning have this option have uh, this option, uh, online workbook. So when you choose the um, course, you can ask the manager about online workbook. There is a platform that uh, where students do the homework assigned by the teacher and then evaluated it, it in percentage so the teacher can watch uh, the progress of the students. Um, Okay, the previous site, I, I, I think you were talking about this one. Uh, I saw some more questions from you. I will try to, to find them. Can you study pronunciation science in primary school? Yes, we can, why not? Uh, it does. It is not uh, required by the um, program, but um, 
if we, if we feel that it's important and it helps our students to find out the new words to understand how pronunciation works in this case we can um, get them familiar with it it could be a part of a game it doesn't mean that they need to to know it by heart or to read all the transcriptions but I guess it would be an interesting idea to share this unusual science and to explain them more about pronunciation. Before the books, I guess that uh, this is a bit different um, slide. So please, here you are. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. That's great that you found it useful. Uh, also, don't miss a chance to, to join our Linguist Training Center. They have lots of interesting webinars, seminars, and programs to you. Uh, so, you can visit the site traininglinguist.ua and uh, find out about the upcoming events and take part in it. Uh, the speakers uh, in Training Center Linguist are wonderful. They can inspire, they share their experience uh, with, with you, they will share the, the best practices and it really helps teachers to become better um, professionals and uh, uh, to to know something um, beyond the school program, I would say. All right. Uh, here are my contact details. If you want to discuss anything, if you have any questions about the series, about the National Geographic Learning, if you will, if you have any suggestions, maybe questions, please uh, do not hesit hesitate. Contact me. That is my phone number. Also, visit our sites. Uh, to, to find out the new information and follow our Facebook uh, where we share all the news. Again, thank, uh, thank you very much. I was really happy to, to, to be with you today. Thank you for finding time. I wish everyone uh, the greatest beginning of the new year. I believe it will be full of challenges, but I believe also that we all are strong enough, are energized and motivated enough to face these challenges and to show our students the best models of uh, how to um, overcome the difficulties. And also I uh, wish everyone to, uh, to have more motivated, more interested students this year who will inspire you with their results, with their feedback. Uh, and, of course, take care. Don't forget to relax. Uh, there is a weekend uh, waiting for us, so please uh, have some rest, get ideas, and uh, we are waiting for you at our future events. So, see you.